What is up, design family, and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. As always, so glad to have you lovely folks back on the channel. On today's episode, I'll be giving you guys my top 10 hot picks for innovative tools that we as fashion designers in 2023 can use to optimize our workflow, to create better designs, and to ultimately to communicate these lovely ideas that we have in our heads to the world. So what are these 10 ideas and what are these 10 tools? Well, tune in. You guys are in for a good one. Welcome to Fit Design TV. Are you interested in sports fashion, design, and manufacturing? Are you establishing your own brand? You are looking good. Anthony, how are we doing? Do you want to? Thank you. Well, you've come to the right place. Lights. Camera. Action. Number one is going to be any sort of digital drawing tablet. This can be a Wacom tablet. This can be a Huon tablet. This can be a Apple iPad. Why do you want this? Well, understand that the world has gone digital. When we share our work, we do so in a digital format. Being able to take these ideas from your head and to turn them into a digitized sense is an essential part of communicating any vision you have as a fashion designer. That's number one. Two. You are going to have to collaborate as a fashion designer with people that may not necessarily be in your local. They not be around you. So having the ability to take this idea, to digitize it immediately, to be able to email it, to send it, to airdrop it, to do whatever you want to do with it is going to be key. Lastly, a digital tablet, a drawing tablet, an Apple iPad, whatever it is, actually makes you a better and more competent designer. Why is this? I would categorize myself as a horrible artist. I'm not creative and I really do not know how to draw. But when it comes down to the way that I use the digital tools that are available to me, honestly, I look like a much, much better artist than I actually am. Why? Let's look at Procreate on the iPad Pro, for example. Procreate gives you the ability to do a ton of things. Number one is to draw in symmetry. Two, you are able to double tap to undo and triple tap to redo just in an instant. So if I'm drawing a line and I notice it's wobbly or I'm drawing outside of the lines, immediately with my double tap, I'm able to go one step backwards and to redraw that line over and over. As opposed to if I was drawing on pen and paper, well, I would have to scrap the entire process and start from scratch, or at the very least, I would have to erase and go through that arduous process. So using a tablet is going to make you a better designer. It's going to allow you to get more reps in to test out, and you're just gonna have a lot more leeway to actually explore the things that you want to explore. Also, from a communication standpoint, the ability to digitize your work and then to explore different patterns on that same silhouette, to explore different colors on that same silhouette, to be able to take that silhouette, to use the liquify tool, to expand it, to alter the process once you're finalized with the initial drawing is going to be key. This is an underrated tip. And honestly, as a fashion designer in 2023, if you're not using an iPad Pro or you're not using a Wacom, whatever it is to digitize your work, well, you are far behind the curve. You're not even behind the curve, you're far behind the curve. Number two is any form of 3D printing technology. And this is specifically for your jewelry designers, you accessory designers out there. 3D printing technology hasn't made its way predominantly to fashion yet, but as an accessories designer, the ability to take a 3D model that you've created of a ring, of a bracelet, of a necklace, and to be able to immediately create a prototype for this to test out how the links work, to test out the proportions, the fit, to make minor adjustments into your 3D model is going to be key. And 3D printing technology has come such a long way from five to 10 years ago. It's gotten to the point where you as an independent designer can actually buy a 3D printing solution at home and with minimal to no technical knowledge, you can set it up and you can get printed right away. So don't turn your back on this. This is a super underrated tip, especially for you accessory designers out there. Number three is the Adobe Creative Suite. And I know that this may sound like a obvious situation, but when it comes to Adobe, understand that Adobe is not just Photoshop. Adobe is not just Illustrator. The Creative Suite in total, and I know that we make Adobe sound like they're the worst company in the world, and in some cases they may be, but understand that there is so much value in the Adobe Creative Suite. Whether you're a designer designing fashion, you can use Adobe Illustrator to create your flats. Whether you're a pattern designer making fresh patterns, you can use Photoshop to be able to do that and instantly make them seamless and tileable. Whether you are a videographer or a video editor, or even if you're a fashion designer, taking your photos that you've shot of your models and of your campaign and you want to create a beautiful video campaign of it. You have Premiere, you have Lightroom. It's so much packed into your Adobe Creative Cloud suite and a little bit of a side tip that I'd recommend. Adobe never checks whether or not you're a student. 
You can tell them you're a student, even if you're a 45 year old man. And what you'll do is you'll get the entire Creative Cloud suite pretty much half off and they never check. You can just say that you went to this school from this year to this year, use any address that you want. And then in the off chance that they ask you to verify, well, then you just make a new email. But that's never happened to me in the history of Adobe. And if you're watching this Adobe, I apologize. Number four, this is a little bit more of a technical tool for you designers out there. And let's just say you have a beautiful floral design with a ton of different patterns on them and gradients and all of these beautiful, lively and vibrant colors. Every single fashion designer knows that in order to translate this pattern onto your clothing, this is going to be a pain in the ass. One super underrated printing method is digital printing. Digital printing has its pros and it has its cons. Some of the core pros are going to be, number one is color accuracy, right? The amount of colors that you can get into a single print at any given time is pretty much endless. You have the entire sRGB spectrum that you can print. You're not limited to 10, 12, 14 colors like you may be with a flatbed screen printing method. Two, your minimums are going to be much, much lower because you're actually just printing the amount of fabric that you need. Three, you're going to have full control over how your patterns appear. There's no need to separate them by layers. You can keep everything pretty much flat, which if you're designing the pattern from scratch, is going to save you a ton of time and effort. So digital printing has its pros. And of course, it has its cons. Some of the cons that you need to know is it tends to be cheaper and wear out over time. But as a small run fashion designer, it may come in clutch and may allow you to explore patterns and prints that you may not have been able to do though before. Number five is going to be pattern grading software. So as fashion designers, we need to create our cutting patterns in order to be able to take our designs and to translate them into physical clothing that our customers can wear. When it comes to grading your patterns, aka increasing the sizes of the patterns between your small to medium to large to XL, historically, this has been done using a mathematical formula and it's been done manually and we draft these upgraded patterns manually. Well, this is 2023 and long gone are the days of manual drafting. We can create patterns using softwares like Lectra, using softwares like Flow 3D, and we're able to automatically grade them using our own or suggested grade rules and automatically start off with a single pattern and then have it grade these patterns accordingly to all of the sizes that you need with the click of a button. So don't sleep on grading software. It's going to save you a lot of time, effort, and it's going to be a hell of a lot more efficient and concretely concise than you are. Number six is, and this is something that you heard here first, is for virtual fitting room technologies, but not in the cyborg AI sense that you might have heard of virtual fitting rooms, because I don't think that those are going to take off the way that we think they're going to take off. Virtual fitting rooms in the form of a 3D viewer of your 3D clothing on an avatar and a website. So imagine this and Clo has a program that they're beta testing right now called Clo Set. What it is, is if you've designed a 3D model in Clo, what you can do is on your e-commerce website, you're able to set up a 3D avatar. It's a window and you as a customer can come into that avatar window. You can put in your height, your weight. It'll create an avatar based on those dimensions and it will model or it will drape your design specifically and directly onto that avatar. So why is this so tremendously useful? Well, look at this. Your customer historically has had to rely on reviews and on any sizing guide that you may have on your website in order to determine what size they are in a specific design. And sure, that may hit 80% of the time, 70% of the time, but that other 30% that is missing is going to lead to unsatisfied customers, delays, and just return garments that are going to cost you time, money, and effort. So as a fashion designer, you want to give your customers the most accurate way for them to test whether a garment is going to fit them correctly. And Close Set allows you to do that. Not only are they going to see how how the garment is going to fit them, but how is the garment going to fit their body shape and their height? This is going to allow them to make educated decisions and it's just going to lead to an all around more efficient and just better process for you and your customers. Number seven is going to be smart textiles, not to be confused with eco-friendly textiles or functional textiles. Smart textiles are textiles that have sensors embedded into them and are able to provide and to take real time data from your day-to-day -day actions, whether it's your body temperature, whether it's the moisture on the surface of your skin, whether it's your pulses, whether it's the amount of seconds per second or per minute that your muscles are vibrating and is able to take that data to relay it through a program, whether it's on your phone or in your MacBook, and to give you real time feedback on what you should do to improve how you're performing X types of activities. So let me give you a specific use case scenario. Let's just say you're a runner and you're trying to maintain a specific BPM 
as you're running in order to conserve energy instead of having to wear a lot of these traditional methods of measuring your heart rate measuring all of these different biometric data that you'll need in order to be able to make those decisions your t-shirt may in the future be able to actually give you that feedback in a more efficient in a more concrete way and with less of a hassle for you as a consumer that's the power of smart textiles and of course this is an area that is continuously growing a lot of research is going into this and it's only going to get better over time but definitely as a designer consider putting your mind in the smart textile space and seeing what can arise as we move forward. Number eight is body scanning technology. As a designer, why is this something that you might want to invest your time into? Well, let's consider a bespoke tailor. Bespoke tailor now has to manually take the measurements of his customer. And of course, as with all manual measurements, you're going to have a degree of error depending on where on the bicep the bicep was measured, where on the thigh was measured, so on and so forth. With body scanning technology, you as a bespoke tailor or you as a custom made to measure manufacturer, whether it's in sportswear or whether it's in bespoke tailoring, are able to accurately and quickly take the measurements of your customer and to be able to craft a well-fitted garment specifically for them. And there's massive implications for this in the made to measure segment. And as we move more and more forward, I believe that even mass manufacturing is going to be able to incorporate some level of made to measure using these technologies to be able to give customers a more personalized experience without having to go all the way down the bespoke route. So it's a beautiful balance of giving the customer exactly what they want at the budget that they want and at the minimum order quantity that they may want. It. Number three is 360 product photography and modeling. This comes in two different ways. First is you're able to actually take these 360 photos of your products, display them on your website, and allow customers to engage with the product in full 360s to see the product in all angles without having to shift through different and multiple photos. You're either able to do this using a 360 photography software or tool, or you're able to do this using 3D modeling software. A really good tool to use is going to be Keyshot XR, which allows you to export your Keyshot files, which is a rendering software, and to embed directly on your website. And if you wanna see what this looks like, check out fitdesign.com. We have a bunch of Keyshot XR 3D models on there that you can engage with and interact with in full 3D to see the garment from all angles, inside, upside, in pretty much any format, in any viewfinder you want. And this just allows for another level of engagement from your customers directly with the products that they intend on purchasing. Last but not least, and if you're sleeping on this, honestly, I don't know what to say to you, but this is going to be 3D modeling fashion design software. And as we all know, we have Marvelous Designer, we have Plow 3D, which are the kings of the hill when it comes to fashion design software. You guys, if you have not engaged this software yet you need to get off your asses and go ahead and do it because the world has become digital we are in a 3d world where more and more we're not only being demanded of in terms of how our customers are engaging with our clothing and our designs but also from a manufacturing and logistics standpoint you no longer have the ability nor the luxury because of time and just the language barriers to be able to go down to the manufacturer to tell them what to do a b c d you need to be able to communicate your designs in a way that is a one-to-one -one true representation of your designs as they appear and as you need them to be 3d modeling software allows you to do that and no other option no better option than clo to do that for you so if you're not a fashion designer that hasn't used clo you don't know what you're missing well guys that is it that is a wrap on this episode that's been my top 10 hot picks for innovative software that you should definitely be using as a fashion designer in 2023, let me know which of these 10 tips or 10 tools that you guys sort of caught you by surprise and you gained the most amount of knowledge and benefit from. If you have any questions specifically about these types of softwares or tools, leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to check them out while I can. Guys, from the very bottom of my heart, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.